people in wheelchairs are people in wheelchairs. Did you catch that? We're just people who happen to be on wheels. It really shouldn't matter how we get around, whether on feet or on our wheels, we still deserve and really actually appreciate being treated just the same as any other human being should be treated with respect and dignity and not looked down upon in any way. So let me give you just a few pointers on how you should probably treat wheelchair users. Fancy meeting you here. My name is Brittany and this channel documents my life as a mom with multiple chronic illnesses, both mental and physical. I'm so glad that you stopped by my video today and I really hope that you might find anything here helpful, informative, or entertaining for either you or somebody that you know. Let's get into it. Now, this is definitely not an exhaustive list and I know that everybody is individual, so not every wheelchair user is going to prefer or expect the same treatment that I do. But I know at least most of these, a lot of wheelchair users agree on. I've seen it on the internet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume it's accurate. First of all, please talk to me and not the person pushing me. I don't really understand why so many strangers just assume that because I am in a wheelchair, I cannot do anything for myself and they automatically talk to, usually probably my husband, if I am being pushed. The fact that I am in a wheelchair simply means that my legs do not work at the moment. It says nothing about the state or functionality of my brain or my mouth. I can speak for myself. I can understand what you're saying to me. And if you want, I can even have a full conversation with you. The wheelchair does not negate that. Now I do understand that there are some wheelchair users who do not have this capability but a lot of wheelchair users do. So preferably, if you need to ask something related to the wheelchair user, please ask directly to the wheelchair user. Don't assume that we are incapable. Assume first that the wheelchair user is capable. And if not, then the person pushing will correct you and then you can adjust the conversation from there. Hopefully they're polite about it though. I can't speak for all wheelchair pushers. However, I can speak for my husband. He's not here right now. I don't know why I keep pointing back here. Anyway, I can speak for my husband if he is pushing me in a wheelchair. There have been some moments when I myself was incapable of conversation with a stranger. For example, I may have just passed out or just woken up from passing out. I may be working through or recovering from a panic attack. And in those circumstances, I still would prefer that you probably ask me first if it pertains to me. And then my husband, he's gonna, I did it again. My husband, he's gonna know what's going on and he will be able to inform you and say, actually, I can help you with this. She needs a minute. But again, first assume that the wheelchair user is capable. Don't just bypass them for the pusher. Now this one, I know for a fact, a lot of wheelchair users would prefer that you do not touch their wheelchairs. Don't touch it. In my experience, when I am in the wheelchair, it's because my legs aren't working. And so the wheelchair becomes my legs. So it feels like a part of me. It is me, it is my legs. Don't touch me. There are a lot of circumstances where strangers will kind of like lean on my handle. It also happens with my walker and I don't like it on that either. A lot of people will just kind of lean on it for support for a second for various reasons. Um, don't do that. That's like leaning on somebody's shoulder for support, like a stranger's shoulder. Like, oh, let me just real quick. I need to catch my balance or something. Also, another thing that has not happened to me because I actually have a power chair. I have heard that those in manual wheelchairs will sometimes experience a stranger just coming and taking over. They'll just grab the handles and just start pushing along. Don't do that. If it looks like they may be struggling, then you can ask, hey, would you like some assistance? It looks like we're both going in the same direction. I can help you out. Would you like me to push you for a while? And then if they say yes, go ahead, I guess. But don't just take over because 
that's that's pretty much the equivalent of just taking somebody by the hand and just like pulling them along. Does that not sound like abduction? I don't think it sounds like abduction. Mm. Probably refrain from doing that. In this next point, I may have found my single biggest annoyance in life right here with this one. If we are in a group of people out for, you know, an adventure of sorts, and at some point we all need to con come together to confer about something, include me, please. I am an adult and I should be included in the, in the discussion. Um, I, a couple years ago, I was with a group of people and we all went to Universal Studios and this was before I had my own power chair. So I just rented a manual wheelchair at the park. And so of course this is, it's a whole, it's an all day affair, you know? And so somebody needed to push me all day. It was mostly my husband, but of course an all day affair. He got tired of pushing and I ended up being kind of passed around. So different people would push me for a, a period of time. And my husband was very good about it, but everybody else, when we would come together and form like a little huddle to discuss our next move, I guess, everybody else, they would like park me this way, facing over there. And then the circle of everybody else was over here to discuss what was happening. And I was completely excluded. And it was at a crowded park, so I couldn't just, you know, try to listen in. There was, no, I was just, you know, twiddling my thumbs, I guess, waiting for somebody to fill me in. And when they were all done discussing, then they, the person pushing me at the moment would come over and I was like, so what happened? What are we doing? What's the plan? And then they would like fill me in, let me know. And I'm like, wait, but hold on. What about maybe doing this instead or like doing it this way? That might make more sense. But at this point, any input that I had was just void because the whole little circle over here had already scattered. And so my opinion didn't count all day long. So if you are pushing someone in a wheelchair and you need to discuss something, Park them into the circle, make some space for them, include them. All right, let's take a little breather right here. And now I have a simple request. If so far you have found anything in this video helpful or something that you did not consider before and you learned something, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up if you find it appropriate. Okay, let's keep going. For this next item, let's think of a completely different scenario, just to kind of get you in the zone to think about it. So let's say you are just walking through a cafe on your way to your own table, and you spot a friend already seated, already established, I guess, and you didn't expect to see this friend there. So you stop to have a brief chat, like, hey, how are you doing and stuff? And she remains seated at her table, but you remain standing because it's just brief and you're about to walk off anyway. Would you crouch down to meet her eye level or would you remain upright and just continue talking to her at this angle? You probably would have remained upright. You can still talk to her from this angle. You can still maintain eye contact. The conversation works perfectly fine with her seated and you standing, right? So why then do people feel the need to crouch down when talking to a wheelchair user? It's just the same. We're having a conversation while one person happens to be seated. You know, you don't need to crouch. That's the kind of thing that I might do with my young child when I'm trying to get down to her level so that I seem less intimidating when I'm trying to scold her for doing something wrong. So when other people do that to me in my wheelchair, it kind of feels like they're treating me like a child who was just caught being naughty. And I've heard that a lot from other people too, on the internet. When speaking to a wheelchair user, just stand normal, you know, just stay where you are. If, however, it's going to be kind of a long conversation, then it might be appropriate for you to try and find another seat and pull up next to them so you're both sitting, 
or if you have the physical capability to kneel down next to them so that you're both down at the same eye level so that the wheelchair user doesn't have to keep looking up at you and make their neck sore. I totally understand that all three of these options from crouching, getting a chair, or kneeling next to them, they all accomplish the same thing. They get you down to the wheelchair user's eye level. I understand that. It's the same result. However, somehow the crouching, it feels kind of patronizing, condescending. I don't know why, but alas, it does for many people. So please try to refrain. Um, now, let me just ask real quick. How comfortable would you be if a random stranger in public asked you how you have sex? It's weird, right? It's yucky. It's ugh. Mm -mm. So why does it somehow seem appropriate for people to ask that to wheelchair users? It's, it's still not. It's still icky to be asked that. Oof, did you hear that pop? Gross. That's gonna hurt in a minute. So the point here is, please do not ask wheelchair users their personal health information. None of your business. There really is no benefit to you knowing that answer, except to just satisfy your curiosity. But is your curiosity worth more than that person's comfort? No. I don't know why it's such a common thing to say, can you still have sex? Gross. If that information ever applies to you, I promise it will sort itself out. You don't need to ask in the first seven seconds of knowing somebody. Don't ask. This also applies to just asking like, what's wrong with you? Or I really hate it when people say it this way. Ready? What did you do? to end up in a wheelchair. This also applies to any mobility aids. I get it with my walker and also with my cane, and I'm like, I didn't do anything. Why would you assume that I did this to myself on purpose? I didn't. It just happened, and here we are. But also just other visible attributes. I frequently get asked what my scars are from. Gross, don't ask people about their scars. Um, if it's relevant information or if that person wants to tell you, cool. They'll probably give you that information, but please do not ask. It is very uncomfortable. The only people who need to know the answers to these personal health questions are the disabled individual, their doctor, and anybody that they choose to tell. Not just some random stranger that you met. 11 seconds ago. All of these points can be summed up with simply treat us like humans because that is what we are. We are humans first, wheelchair users second, or even maybe third or fourth, you know? We could also be painters or musicians or, you know, other things before you have to treat us like wheelchair users. We are also humans. And we also have emotions and intellect and anything else that you would assume an able-bodied walking person would also have. All in all, treat us like people. That's what we are. Be polite and don't treat us any differently. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for sticking around for all of my ramblings. I really appreciate it. If you found anything in this video helpful, informative, or entertaining in any way, please let me know with a thumb. Either one. I would love whatever you choose to give me. And remember, chronic illness is tough, so it's a good thing you're tougher. Toodles! I don't remember if I need to clap, but let's clap. That should be good. I don't know. Unnecessary claps finished.